Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is my LDRC Unimog and I really, really like this thing. LDRC reached out and said that they have a trailer or a, oh my God, I will never call a trailer a trailer again. They reached out and said that they have a truck bucket. <laughs> Just the best. <laughs> Uh, the truck bucket never this will never be a trailer again truck bucket i've been saying it wrong all these years okay so there's a green and a yellow version maybe they're calling tan yellow either way i should have built this before you know so i could have painted it but that's okay we'll we'll get to that looks like it's potentially pre-assembled let's give it a shot here the scale is great because I've got a WPL C34, which is, I think, 112 scale. And I think this will line up nicely with it. Oh, yeah. We've got the same wheels and tires that the truck would have normally had. This appears to be the exact same bed. Yeah, this is the exact same bed. We've got a exact rear axle, effectively a shortened piece of the existing bed. No set of taillights. These are those little boxes right there. A completely empty rear end. Makes sense. They've got this writing on some bushings, most likely. I think it's probably gonna be fine. I'm gonna plug this hole with some hot glue. Might as well. I mean, we don't want anything to get in there. Again, we're gonna plug this up with some hot glue. I've said this before in previous videos, but this lens came pre-painted. I simply took this lens off painted the inside housing in silver, and you can see what a monumental difference that is. A lot brighter, a lot more vivid. Looks a hell of a lot better. All right, so I pulled the axle housing apart, and you can see that there's this little bushing right here. It is 2.5 millimeters wide, or close enough anyway. Diameter is six millimeters-ish, and the ID, I believe, is three millimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna put one of those in. The outer bearing, this is what actually supports the main part of the stub axle. The thickness here is three. OD is 10. ID, I believe, is six. There you go. All assembled. You can see I put some different wheels and tires on it only because the truck has smaller wheels and tires and, you know, wanted it to match. Otherwise, it would have sat a lot higher. Otherwise, it's completely factory. Conceptually, I think it's great. You know, it looks really good with this truck. I should have painted it at the same time I painted that, but we'll get there. It's just the back half of the Unimog. I mean, the axle's straight out of the Unimog. The bed is just the Unimog. It's it's the same back half of the vehicle, which is fine. Where it's lacking here is the way it attaches. It's basically sort of a giant U-bolt. So you can see that it just hooks through the eyelet right there. And it's not all that easy to install or take out. You gotta kind of twist it. Okay, it's never coming out again. Yeah, not thrilled about that. It works. I mean, this is a rigid member. I don't think it's gonna bend. It obviously wants to twist, right? I mean, look how it's designed. I did tighten it down. You know, it's got a nut on both sides. So, it, you know, it's not gonna move you know, without some force. So it's fully operational. I just don't like it. It is a good first attempt, but conceptually speaking, it needs some work. I'm going to go ahead and solve all of that right now. I'm also going to go ahead and paint this thing here. I'm going to paint silver, but I'm not going to add the stripes only because I want to use this for a number of my smaller scale vehicles. And I want it to be a little bit more nondescript. Otherwise, yeah, I think it's actually pretty good. Rear suspension actually works okay. All right, so we're gonna see this back painted. Problem solved. I made this, It's I think it's called a tongue, that mounts to these two unused points right here in the chassis. And kind of just, uh, yeah, gives it a bit more bulk. 
It's got this little leg that comes down. But you can see that it really doesn't attach with anything, and that's because there's one other part. This is a threaded M4 rod and a threaded captured eyelet that's a four millimeter diameter. Theoretically, I needed a three millimeter diameter. However, my other trailers all use this connection, so I figured might as well standardize things. Here's the part from Shapeways. That is the main leg, and here is the adapter for the trailer hitch. One minor weird thing that's happened, these four standoff, well, there's only one left, but there were four of these standoffs here that were there for a, a pad that I haven't designed yet. And when it arrived yesterday, they were these three were broken. I think what happened is Shapeways may have thought that these were sprues because on the bottom, it was. This was attached here. So I think what had happened was this is the exact same shape that they recommend for a sprue. So perhaps they thought that there were pieces that had broken off. I don't know. Anyway, a little bit annoying. My own fault though, I made it look too much like a sprue. So these are painted with about three or four coats of low gloss black paint. And now we're gonna go ahead and install this. To mount the tongue, we're gonna use some two and a half millimeter self-tapping screws because it uses screws quite similar to those by WPL. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some of my spare WPL hardware. So this one here is about six millimeters long. I'm gonna go ahead and line that right on up there. Thread all four of these in. Once those four are installed, you're gonna go ahead and get a M3 screw. This one here is about, what is that, 16? Eh, it's about 12 millimeters long. Run it through this hole here. And on the top side, you're just gonna wanna use a washer and an M3 nut. And just to be a little bit poetic, this is the nut that was on this little rod here. <laughs> Tighten that up. Once you've done that, this thing is quite rigid. Next, we're gonna install the kickstand. Now for that, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, if you don't have a long enough M3, you can shove a three millimeter diameter rod through here. You can use a piece of all thread with two nuts on each side. I think I'm just gonna try and find a, I don't know, 25 millimeter long M3 screw, run it straight through here and put a nut on the other side. There's no reason to use any kind of tension to hold it down. I'm just gonna use a lock nut on this side so it doesn't back off. I lied, this is a 30 millimeter long screw. To install it, you're gonna want it in this orientation here. The little teeth, that one and that one, those are going to line up with this little kind of flexible bar. So it needs to be in this orientation. Okay, just shove it straight through. It should just barely stick out enough and it does. That on this side here, that is in. So the little divots here will prevent this from dropping down. So there it is stuck in the up position, down. Last thing is to install the threaded rod. So this first step is to figure out how deep this goes in, because I want to use as much of this as possible. This is hard to see, but it's actually open right there. So this whole thing is a, is a completely open void, and I'm terrified I knew it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use an M4 tap to basically tap that and then run it right in. The tap I used didn't reach the entire depth, only about uh, 20 millimeters or so. So that's the length of threaded rod I cut off. I'm gonna put a bit of blue thread lock on it. And just make sure you've got this thing as flat as possible. Otherwise it'll just be weird. Not quite done yet. Got this tire that I'm probably never gonna use again. Stick it on there. 2.5 millimeter diameter threaded screws. Thread on in. There's obviously it's round shaft, so there's no alignment. I'm sure later on in the video, I will have sorted this. Now let's install the trailer hitch on the truck. Here's the trailer hitch adapter. Now this is for the LDRC aluminum rear bumper. I'll explain how that works later because I don't remember how it works. So we'll pretend I do. This is the hitch piece that you're going to need. Basically it's the pin. I use these because they're all over eBay. And once again, it's exactly the method I use for all of my vehicles. So I'll explain how this works in a sec. I don't know if that's of any use. It does say SCX10 on it for some reason. I don't think there's an up and a down for this. No. So we need that. We need a 1.5 millimeter nut driver. This was part of the sprue as well for the trailer. Obviously, I needed all that. I painted this again with a low gloss black paint. And you need a nice clean face here. 
run the screw through here, through there, and there's just enough room on the backside for the factory nut, which now I have to somehow install live on camera on a recorded, for crap's sake. There, try some different pliers. There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three. So this is the assembly. There's no top or bottom at this point here. So we're gonna take this pin. This is the locking pin for the system. It's also got this lovely scale looking chain, which goes through here and then locks at the bottom. At the bottom, it came with this little cotter pin here. Now this is absolutely for a Tamiya. So whoever Tamiya's contract manufacturer is in China that they're not wanting to tell us about, well, that's where they got it. I've got this little tiny guy here, which I think is a little more scale. Come on. Cool. So that goes there. Cotter pin at the bottom will go there. And that's the overall look. I didn't have to put this in, but I did. So let's go ahead and slide it on. My LDRC already has it. And I think I'm going to have to pull off all four of these screws and the lock nuts. I've got the back bumper removed. You see this little C channel right there in the plastic? And just go ahead and slide it right on in. Then we can come over here. So you might be noticing something, but I guarantee you there's a method to my madness. Take the screws that used to be here, thread them on in. Okay, so the brackets are there. So you screw this down a bit, just like that. Okay, you see how it pries it off? Well, guess what you have access to now? The nuts. I can't do this on camera, but you'll just get the nut in there. Hold it in place with the needle nose pliers, tighten it up, back that out, and you're good to go. Not feeling in any way annoyed, we can now back this screw back out. Okay, I'll take both of them out. And there you go. I may need to adjust this a bit since there's a little bit of play. I don't know why there's that much play. Anyway, your version of this won't have the play. Mine, as usual, uh, I get all the leftovers. All right, so with this mounted to the back of the vehicle, we can park it right there. Come get our trailer, park it right there. Drop the pin. And there we go. Okay, here's the deal. I did design this mount to fit a number of my vehicles. And as I have four different vehicles with a trailer hitch for a smaller scale. And as a result, I kind of had to take an intermediate. So you can see that the trailer is leaning down a little bit. But I also assume that I would have something in it. So like right now is just kind of as it sits when you set it down. And if you just tap it, it'll kind of seat the rear suspension. Looks nice and flat. So there we go. I made something that won't fit on my camera here. I do think I'm going to come back in here at some point to make the taillights work, probably using an auxiliary battery pack. And I still have to figure out what to do here.